and going live. And got it. And I watched the buttons. I got people at the front door. And boom, you're live on Lunch Conversations with Randy and Teddy. And those who don't know me, I'm Teddy. Uh, my partner in crime is Mr. Randy Wooden. And I think you're looking at Lunch Conversations being shared, Randy, as you're getting set up. Our special guest today is uh, Ballot Gasper. And uh, Lunch Conversations with Randy and Teddy is sponsored in part by the Elder Law Firm out of Greensboro, North Carolina. If you, as I get my notes over here in front of me, if you have anybody in your life that you care about their journey into elder care or the journey into estate planning, their journey, you know, their, as they age and you need help with that or want to have some questions answered, reach out to the Elder Law Firm, elderlawfirm.com in Greensboro, North Carolina, 336-396-4551. And it's imperative that you say to them that Randy sent you. So- uh I'll tell you what, Teddy, I am, you know, you know me, I'm Mr. Uh, Computer Whiz here, and uh, I, I don't Facebook know that we up. are doing anything live on LinkedIn at the moment. I just well, shared I'll, it. You, you you take it from here, buddy, and I'll go work on that. <clears throat> yep. So I don't see it on LinkedIn yet, but Randy Wooden with Goodwill Industries of Northwest North Carolina, director for our professional center. Now we're based in Winston, which is all well and good, but I have clients across, we're a 31 county Goodwill. So a lot of clients throughout our footprint, but also clients around the country, in part based on the show that we do every Wednesday. We have clients across the country who could use some help. Our services are free, so that's a good, that's always good. Uh, but also we do work by appointment. So if you have uh, you know, an interest in learning more, reach out to me on LinkedIn, find me, and I'm happy to, to try to help you. Uh, Ballant Gaspar joins us today. And Ballant, I've known for some years, and I think Teddy is, is also known and and Ballant has an interesting, and it, uh, he'll introduce himself in a little bit more detail, but he's the, the CFO for SiteSource. And you may not be familiar with SiteSource, but you will be. And I'll tell you that hat he's wearing is their logo. So uh, they spare no budget. You know, <laughs> I mean, it's a, this is a big dollar show, folks. So just to let you know. But we're going to talk some topics about how certain companies have worked on the, the war for talent issue over the years and grow your own, I'll, my term, that may not be the term you would use for it. Maybe think of words like apprenticeships, internships, whatever, but, but SiteSource is involved heavily with creating their own class of folks, training that class, and then, and I'll use my own lingo here, but then hiring some of what you view as the best of that class. But the the good news, too, is that the rest of the participants in the class now are equipped with some technical skills to go out and really start a good career. So it's a win-win for everybody. We're going to learn more about that business model and how it's working around other industries and other parts of the world. But before we dive into that, Balan, if you would, go ahead and introduce yourself in a little bit more detail, please. Well, hello, yeah. everyone. Uh, yes, my name is Balan Gaspar. It is Hungarian, as I was born and raised in Budapest, Hungary. I uh, moved here in my early 20s, uh, lived in Atlanta for a while, and then mm -hmm. uh, with the second child on the way, moved to Winston-Salem, where my wife grew up. Um, I'm a serial entrepreneur. I got my MBA at Wake, uh, originally in international business and finance, and that's what my corporate background is in. But uh, ever since, um, I guess my first business was in 2004, uh, mm -hmm. importing, in a, importing winery equipment and distributing it in the United States. Uh, okay. But the business that we're... Um, talking about today is SiteSource. Um, and SiteSource is a custom software development shop that we founded in 2009. And uh, here in Winston-Salem and in Richmond. And uh, well, let's see. Oh, sorry. We're, we're st I'm still introducing myself. So um, what, sure. what, what else is there to, to know about me? Um, where are you from? Where you've, you've done some traveling? Uh... Oh, oh, yes. yeah love to love to travel as i said i'm i'm originally from budapest so i i've always done a lot of traveling in the uh in in europe and then back about 10 years ago my my kids and my wife uh uh protested that even though they love my family they love budapest they love hungary every big trip can't be there so uh so we started uh making our big family vacations to different countries in europe and then going from there to hungary um or vice versa uh let's see in terms of uh in terms of professional background as i said i got my mba yeah. here here in winston-salem i started working uh in financial services 
and did that for several years before starting that first business. And that gave me a, that, gave, that essentially cemented the idea that I, that was already fairly strong that I, um, I, I wanted to run my own business. So I, um, since then I have started several smaller, smaller operations, but the big one was, uh, site source, which, uh, which where, where yeah. I still, uh, today. Yeah. Serial entrepreneur. So, um, there's always a why behind that. And you, I think you just alluded to the, I mean, you kind of, after experiencing the one kind of work you said, eh, this is where I need to be was, what was it really that kind of stoked that, that fire that said, this is, this is where I need to be. It's interesting. I have given it some thought over yep. the years and I, and uh, I, without going into, uh, you know, too much of a history lesson, uh, Hungary at the time when I was a child was a, was a, an Eastern Bloc country. It was a communist country. Um, and, uh, but at the time, of course, it was perfectly normal for me, but, uh, but it was only later that I realized that it was not normal at all, that uh, there were a lot of entrepreneurs in my, in my family. There were a lot of small business owners in my family. Um, and so I guess uh, it's true what they say that it, it, it must be in the blood. <laughs> huh. So, yeah, so you get a little taste of it and, and we'll probably hopefully have a chance to talk about some of the challenges you face too. I mean, it's not all been, not well, all been rosy and, and uh, I mean, I'm sure, you know, you punch the clock at uh, nine 30, like uh, my friend Teddy and punch out at four 30 and uh, don't think about it the rest of the day. And, um, now just being just being silly there for a moment, but hey, let's let's pivot here. And we again, we should all strive for that, Randy. But you can't yeah. pull that off when you're trying to build it. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to learn from the master over here, this Teddy guy. I don't know how he does it, but look, I mean, look, look at that. I mean, look at the shindig he's got going on over. This is perfect, <laughs> right? All right, so so uh, we're going to talk about this whole idea behind growing your own. Let's first start with site source. What is it? And then we'll pivot to Empower, which is really is what I'd call the program that we're here to talk about and how that could be replicated maybe throughout other industries. So what, SiteSource. SiteSource, yeah. SiteSource is a custom, develop, a custom software development shop. Uh, we're okay. all, we have all uh, full stack software developers and make everything from mobile apps to large enterprise, custom enterprise software solutions uh, and have been doing that since 2009. And early on, because we never had offices we everybody worked from home offices and mm -hmm. it was very easy for us to attract some of the top most experienced talent all over the country and in fact they would take huge pay cuts to come work for us uh, just because of the things that we the, the intangibles that we offer these were all professionals who have had enough experience where money was mm -hmm. not the number one you know driver of of, of what they wanted to do professionally so simple things like, well, the very fact that we would, in 2009, we would let them work from their home offices. Right, uh, right. We would let them work. Or, and in fact, every year we gave them, uh, we gave them money to add to their home technology setups, which, uh, which was, these were all true technologists. So they had thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars invested in their home equipment and, uh, Yet their workday was was done on a you know five hundred dollar uh, leased <laughs> laptop. So, so they appreciated that. Um, the fact that we tried to, um, although we worked on very on similar projects most of the time, the larger projects that they did prior to joining SiteSource, we actually got involved. That's that's when I got mm -hmm. involved with the entrepreneurial community and became a mentor in a lot of accelerators and incubators. Um, I'll, mainly to start attracting some of that business and give them essentially dessert projects <laughs> as they were coming off of large projects they would be okay. able to work, experiment with new technologies and work on smaller projects uh, that were a lot more fun uh, but of course as the years went by everybody else kind of uh, it became more and more difficult the, the the perks got bigger and bigger at other firms yeah. so it became more and more difficult to hang on to them and to recruit them and so at, at nine years later in 2018, we sat down and mm -hmm. we decided that for the first time ever, we're going to have to hire um, more junior developers. So the conversation started rolling um, about just how junior can they be? Mm -hmm. And what is it that mm -hmm. we can, what is it that, that we can and what is it that we cannot teach them? And before long, we realized that technically there wasn't anything that we couldn't teach them, assuming that they had 
you know, some minimal aptitude, but mostly the right attitude. And so then it yeah. became, okay, yeah. well, so, so we're basically hiring or, or searching for fit and then we'll, we'll teach them everything else. And at the time we were talking about hiring two people mm-hmm. before long, we were saying, okay, well, if we're going to train two people from scratch, how to be full stack developers, then we might as well train 20. And if we're going to train 20, yeah. we might as well train 40. Uh, and so it, it kind of grew, grew out of our own need for developers. Um, the, the initial conversation, but, uh, but it took on other dimensions, additional dimensions before we actually um, started the program. Um, one of my best friends and, and, and co-founders uh, and the current CEO of, of, of SiteSource, Ali Tapaz, he got his start in a similar program. Not exactly the same, but, but somewhat yeah. similar. So he always had this inclination to and drive to pay it forward. He he was moved to Winston Salem by Reynolds, who needed a needed a special type of developer, and they couldn't find any. So mm-hmm. they made this offer to a bunch of people that hey, anybody who's willing to learn this uh, this platform will you know will move you to Winston Salem. You'll learn it, and then you'll have a job. Mm-hmm. And so he always wanted it because the, originally he was he, he studied something completely different in college, and by the time he realized he wanted to be a software developer, he had a degree in you know biology and economics, and nobody yeah. wanted. To, hire him so this was his foot in the door and that's really what yeah. what uh, what he wanted to offer people is is that that grabbing that first rung on the ladder that uh, giving them a chance if, if they know this is what they want to do then uh, then we'll we'll help them get get started yeah so this uh this empower i'll use the word boot camp and that may not be the the proper term for it but when i think of that i think of an intense relatively short term versus hey four years or two years or whatever but is is that you know what's this thing kind of look like uh, and i don't think there's an empower class going on at the moment but i know in the past i've i've sat with with your folks and talked a little bit about job hunting related stuff and so forth and all of the i tell you all the techie stuff you guys do is <laughs> over my head so you could tell me anything and I'd believe it and I just nod my head. But but you know, we're not going to get any deep in the technology piece of this. Yeah, no, I understand. Really. Uh, so so you're not doing it right now, but empower, I imagine, like a lot of uh organizations and, and groups ran into some mud when COVID hit. And you said 2018 yeah. you started this, so a year and a half later or whatever, Big time. Uh, suddenly the world changed. So how did how did you pivot when that happened? Or well, what happened? It, to answer your first first question, yes, yeah, it's yeah. incredibly intense. Um, it is uh, yeah. it is uh, eight weeks of uh, of forty plus hours a week just in the classroom. So it's it is incredibly intense. It's uh, it's meant to be, and and uh, and we we have we go through a very lengthy process of of um, uh, accepting applications and then interviewing people before before they go into the program, and then once they're in, it is. Uh, it is just madness. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's wow. vital. Uh, not really, but, but it is, it is extremely challenging and it's meant to be mm-hmm. It's designed that way. Um, and in terms of COVID, uh, COVID did, uh, uh, did derail um, Empower 2020. Mm-hmm. Essentially we, we, we had, uh, not only were we, were we planning to, uh, to uh, duplicate the program, we also partnered that year with Winston Starts here in Winston-Salem, which is a, uh, an incubator slash accelerator. I think they, um, the scalerator is what they, is what they like to refer to themselves. Um, it's a fantastic organization and, and when we share office space with them. So it's, um, there was a natural connection and also for site tech. Um, and the idea behind that conversation with for site tech was that, that we felt we've proven that this model works, that you can actually launch people incredibly efficiently into this very rewarding career and so there was a chance there was an opportunity to to see if that model can scale to see if using partnering with uh with uh, community colleges would allow us to scale that and so that entire thing was derailed by by covid because from mm-hmm. one sure. from, from one day to the next as we were as we were starting to accept applications all of a sudden everything shut down so so the word came yep. down, you know, until further notice, uh, this is on hold. And of course, the further notice uh, didn't come for uh, for for long enough to where we, <laughs> we felt like we were already kind of out of it enough 
to where we were able to uh, launch the 2021 class. Uh, and there were some conversations about p- potentially doing it online, yeah. but specifically, and that's the reason why, why I definitely wanted to make sure that I answered your first question. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's the main reason why it, it couldn't work um, remotely. It couldn't work online. Yeah. We, did, we, did, we did discuss it in, in depth, but uh, our first class in 2018 was in two separate locations. Um, there was a class in, in Richmond, Virginia, and there was a class in Winston-Salem, mm-hmm. North Carolina. And uh, not all of the not all of the instructors were duplicated. So there were we actually because we we weren't one hundred percent confident that our curriculum was was going to work and our approach was going to work. Mm-hmm. Our safety net was essentially that that the instructors were all incredibly experienced uh, professionals, and uh, certain subjects we only had the one. So we we one okay. of our instructors came in from Liverpool and he there was only one of him so he couldn't be in both places so we we did a simulcast and we notice immediately a drop off in in retention a mm-hmm. drop off in engagement at the offsite so so we actually had to back paddle and and and, and back interesting that. yeah within within a matter of within a course of a week so we already had some experience. Uh, with that and, and yeah. based on that and based on the in- intensity of, of the program, we just uh, we just uh, nixed the idea of. of yeah, COVID. well, maybe down the road when COVID is a little more behind us, that'll resurface. So I, I guess I need to ask you now, I'm no IT guy. Teddy, you have a background in IT. Now, you're not a programmer and you're not a developer. And at I can least plug in my computer. Well, you know, it's you know, he's 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 our de facto IT guy on this uh, team, <laughs> too, here. All right. So what is it you what do you look for? I mean, you say you can teach people. Uh, are there certain characteristics uh, profiled? Uh, do you want any IT background? Uh, and again, I don't want to make this necessarily germane to you, but I'm talking about if this is going to be a boot camp, I imagine you got to get people that are mentally, they have the want to, huge, big, big want to, and you teach them the how to, but are there certain, I don't know, traits, characteristics that you see no. that tend to make people successful? Uh, yep. the, the the want to that's 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 what, what is going to make yeah. somebody uh, successful. It's um, it's funny because uh, no, we're not looking for any kind of uh, background. Um, most okay. of it's and from the first class, I think only half the people that we ended up hiring uh, had a college degree. Uh, none of them had a um, maybe one of them had a a, a technology background at okay. all. Uh, and so it's it's really about how sure are you that this is what you want to do? So, so there has to be some, there has to be some level of at least it's, if you're just testing the waters that then empower is definitely not for you. But if you already, if you already came to the conclusion that this, whatever it takes, this career, I'm going, I'm going to make this into a a career. Mm -hmm. You have that drive, then it'll work. And in terms of aptitude, uh, Strangely enough, I forget where this uh, where this research is coming from, uh, but it it has kind of uh, proven itself in in Empower. As I was looking at the the student population, uh, it's still a, a, a common conception uh, myth, I guess that that um, you have to have a math brain, quote unquote, uh, to in order to be a software developer. And there's actually a, a higher correlation between success and in, in enjoyment in software development between um, music, a, a background in music or a background in languages than there mm-hmm. is uh, with a background in, uh, in math and, and, and sciences, uh, which makes sense because back in the day, you did need a very, um, a very thorough, solid background in math to just to able, be able to understand it. But now the tools are so sophisticated that it's, it's, it's more akin to learning how to you know, read sheet music or, or how to learn yeah. A, yeah. another language. Yeah, Teddy? You yeah, to, uh, yeah. Valen, you, you may remember, the, I, can't, I can't remember what institute or what government agency was starting the conversation that software development should be considered another language. I don't remember that, but it makes makes sense to me. I mean, it's, all, it's almost like, it's almost it, it, like, I mean, they, they are called languages for, for a reason. I mean, there's uh, there's syntax to them. There's, you know, there's a vocabulary. There's there's concepts that you need to understand. But that's why Empower didn't 
then we didn't come out to uh, it's not a language school so we, we our idea was not to to teach a language to these students our goal was to to under help them understand the, the just the 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 overall landscape help them understand what makes it what is it what is what is fundamental what is core to any platform or any language and actually across languages and across platforms and what is it what what are the things that they need to internalize and truly understand and what are the things that they can just google yeah. and so once you once you're able to separate those two things you can become a software you have all the all that you need to become a software developer because uh yeah you'll just use a lot of googles you google as you're as you're getting started but at least you'll know what questions to ask yeah. so well, until you understand it enough to know what questions yeah. to ask yeah. what to type in you, you can't get started but once you once you have that that level of understanding then uh then you're good and so we we really one of our students put it put it best that we really they learned how to learn in uh, in empower Interesting. Yeah, I'd, I'd be at the bottom of the barrel, I think, in terms of the tech side of stuff. But, you know, life is a journey. And I think, you know, if, if we stop learning in general, now I'm not saying I'm ready for the next Empower class, but mm. it, I think it is good to understand uh, and, and be inquisitive in, in whether it's technology or other areas of life to continue to learn. I mean, look at Ted, he reinvented himself yeah. at the age of <laughs> 49. I, I don't have a problem saying 49. I, I, <laughs> Randy will tell you, Bill, that yeah. the reason why I am smarter than him is because I know how to dance on a keyboard through YouTube and Google faster than him. Uh, <laughs> hey, we're talking with Ballant Gaspar. Ballant is CFO of SiteSource here in Winston-Salem. And uh, it's the business model. It's very intriguing and, and kind of growing your own. And, and I'm sure there were some challenges or maybe hesitancies to say, hey, do we really want to invest all this time? What if it doesn't pan out? What are our contingency plans? And we still need people. And it sounded like you said, hey, you know what, now that there's a, Teddy, ready for this one, a proliferation of other uh, companies doing this kind of work, we can't afford to hire the talent that we did. So we've got to figure out plan B. Were there some other options that you looked at uh, aside from this? What are some of the concerns you ran into that you're able to knock down? Uh, not seriously. Uh, I mean, yeah. we discussed other options. We discussed just simply uh, recruiting and, um, and and seeing if people worked out. But but with every with every conversation with every new um, new idea, uh, we always came back to this. I mean, from every from every possible uh, perspective, it, it's it, it was the best solution. It was the best idea. Uh, with with forty people in the first class, uh, we got uh, yes. It was a very serious, especially for a small firm like us. It was a very serious financial investment. It was an even more serious opportunity cost. Uh, because of the because of the limited number of people that we had in the company, and and obviously they couldn't be productive while they were while they were spending eight hours a day in a classroom teaching people, yeah. but at the same time it gave us the opportunity to have an eight week long two way interview with uh, with forty very driven um, uh, potential candidates, and so it and we were very very transparent about all of this from the from the get go. And it worked so well that, in fact, while we initially wanted to hire two people, uh, I, we ended up hiring eight people, excuse me, six people as full-time employees out of that class um, and two additional uh, students as, as contractors. And then when they went on to find uh, full-time employment, we, we hired another two as, as contractors. And I, I want to say that since then, we hired an additional two <laughs> and one of those contractors became a full-time employee since then. Yeah. And one of them yeah. was a full-time employee for a while. And, and now, then she found something else. So to talk about, uh, if you could about the, um, just the, the philosophy that site source had in the context of um, why live training versus virtual training. And Dean throws out that, um, you know, Udemy and other places, they, they provide this train, online training. Yeah. Let me say it another way. They provide online courses. They don't provide online training. Yeah. But what was the big uh, decision uh, action or, or thought that said we need to do this live versus virtual? Well, some of it 
was the just the amount of time so it, it's uh it, it to do it as as fast as we wanted to do it uh and as uh, make it have it be as intense as it was yeah. you can't really duplicate that online um a, a lot of a, virtually nothing that we teach not virtually actually nothing that we teach is proprietary yeah. All of this stuff is available. As you said, you can learn it online, no problem. Uh, the challenge is that, um, uh, again, I don't want to, because I don't remember where I read it, uh, I'm hesitant to throw out statistics, but uh, uh, over 90% of the people who start these online courses end up not finishing them. And a lot of them are unfortunately going to be stuck on silly things that, um, Easily that an instructor them. would be able to help yeah. them through uh, very easily. And they actually walk away worse off than they were before because now they believe that they can't do it. Whereas it was just, it was really something that, that shouldn't have happened. So there's no, there's no reason it's, it's a lot easier to, 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 it's kind of the, the getting thrown into deep water uh, approach to learning how to swim. Yeah. Uh, it's a lot easier and faster to be completely immersed in it and then get it than then it is is to try to piecemeal it and and uh i i think that's the that's the bottom line of it i, I can yep. give you a stat on the online training in the context of udemy and illumio and skillshare etc cetera, etc cetera. um i have classes out on those sites uh i'll just take udemy as example Oh, almost 6,000 people have paid for one of my courses. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now don't misunderstand me, Randy. That ain't, that ain't millions of dollars, but about nearly 6,000 people have paid for my courses. Less than 5% have completed it and gotten the certification, mm -hmm. which is aligns with what you're saying yep. that, you know, they start and then they don't, they don't complete. And if you don't complete, we don't create value in our society, let alone in that person. Yeah, it's, it, yep. it is, it, it is a big challenge for, for them because again, all this knowledge, all this, uh, all this stuff is, is available. It's out there and it's very inexpensive. Uh, obviously we, we provided it for free, but you know, you can take online courses for, um, for, uh, for free, uh, at least in technology at a million other places but sure. uh, but it is very difficult to uh it is very very difficult to to uh, internalize piecemeal and 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 in a trickle and it is also um it's not something that we could we could afford to to wait on so uh, it, yeah i think i think i think that's i don't know if, if there's you, much you needed the product out of this you needed a product you wanted yeah. to train 40 people and you wanted to get a product from that that was the your you, you and also there was a uh there was a uh, a philanthropic value here as well you're trying to help people yeah. but mm -hmm. along the way you're looking for a product and you can't we are rely. looking for a product but but we made a commitment to all of them so yeah. so it was not a uh, it was not a that's what when I first said Fight Club, I immediately realized, well, that's not really it because, uh, yes, we 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 knew that we were not going to hire the entire class, but at the same time, we were looking for sponsors. We were partnering with organizations who who needed talent, and and we essentially vouched for these people and their training and said, okay, well, here you you, you uh, here's this company looking for a handful of developers. Mm -hmm. um, and fortunately, in this in the first class, that was a challenge because we were new, the program was new. But in the second class, um, there were more jobs waiting for the candidates than or the, the students than than there were students themselves. And so it's it's um, so yeah, it, we 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 are invested in 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 all everybody who goes through the program, and that's a personal thing. So that's you're right. That's not part of the product. That's not part of what site source needed. That's that's part of what Ali and, and, and Harper and myself were, were committing to is making sure that that these people got value out of it, even if we are not, uh, we were not. Uh, yeah. Hired. So uh, boot well, camps that you refer to it as a boot camp. I mean, a, a lot yeah. of the, the similar boot camps, at least at the time in 2018, where anyone could be anywhere from 10 to $15,000 um, mm -hmm. per, per head to, to get this kind of education. And so we, we felt like, we 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 didn't want to we didn't want to you know bait and switch anybody we wanted to make sure that you get that that, that kind of value out of it even if we didn't hire you uh, so that then you can you can go on and and, and find mm -hmm. a job with someone else 
you know we're about halfway through the show teddy so you may want to queue up the you want to cool. do the sponsor now or i'll do that yep. now and then we'll continue our conversation uh, hey you're on lunch conversations right. of randy and teddy our special guest today is Malak gaspar of site source the conversation is all about developing and building your own team by uh through professional development before you hire uh it'll be great conversation we'll keep having it and after i introduce our our uh, special, our, our sponsor is the Elder Law Firm. Elder Law Firm is out of Greensboro, North Carolina, elderlawfirm.com. If you uh, have family members who are on a journey needing estate planning, elder care planning, if you have not filled out those seven documents that you need to have uh, for either yourself or the elders and, uh, and your, your, your family members, you need to talk to the elder law firm because those documents are critical for elder care and estate planning. Reach out to elder law firm, Greensboro, North Carolina, 336-396-4551. Please tell them that Randy sent you. Back to you, buddy. There you go. Yeah, Valen, thanks for joining us, by the way. And we have, uh, Teddy, I know we have some some uh, chat stuff going on there. So keep an eye on that if there's yeah, anything I, I, to work I'll in. I'll up one of these questions in a minute. All right. Sounds sounds good. All right. So I'm I'm one of your empower participants. And uh, so I've had an eight week exposure to you and vice versa. And uh, let's say I didn't make the cut. Um, whatever that means. I, if you're, I, do, do you tell these guys right off the, the get go? Hey, we're going to probably hire four of you. Mm -hmm. it, it almost sounds like in some ways, like, uh, what is that? And I, I, I don't, don't go there. I know where you're going. You're going, you're going to go to that big brother thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't watch a lot of, but, but what was that <laughs> show where they put them on an Island survivor, right? When they vote people <laughs> off and it's one person against the other and they're all brown nose and everybody and all this, that, and the other, I mean, there's yeah, gotta none be of that. None yeah. of that is going on uh, because <laughs> all of them are, because all of them are going to survive the island. So all of them are going to finish together as a class. They are helping each yeah. other. They're working on projects okay. together. Uh, they don't, um, they don't know <laughs> what, they don't necessarily know what we're looking for. They are just, they're just there to, to learn. And we reinforce that throughout the, the, the course. Like, don't worry about that because you have, you have, as long as you're doing your best in terms of understanding and, and what we're, what we're teaching you, you're, you know, that that's all you can do to influence our decisions. So just worry about getting value out of it uh, and making sure that, that you, um, that you're, you're a software developer at the end. And so regardless of whether it's going to be with us, plus they knew that we were working with organizations who were, I mean, they would come in and, and pitch themselves. Uh, during oh, okay. The launch. Yeah. So, Plus we, yeah, we, we had, we had these uh, brown bag lunch specials uh, several times and you, you were gracious enough to, to come in and, uh, and talk to our classes and, and talk to them about professional development in general and, and marketing themselves as, and their talents and how to go look for, uh, look for employment that, that aligned with, with uh, what they were looking for. And so, and, and how to do that professionally and how to improve it. And so we are, they, they knew that we were there to help them. So yes, they knew that all of them couldn't, were not going to be able to, to, uh, to, to come work for us. And some of them probably didn't want to, so, <laughs> but, uh, then that's the whole part about the, about it being a two, what two way, uh, eight week interview. Uh, but, I wonder, yeah. And I, so, I, so, you know, I'm an old recruiter from, from days gone by and recruiting is a competitive thing. And so, and, and you may not want to answer this, so you know, just punt if you need to. So you partner with other companies who look for developers. Mm -hmm. And so I would think site source is looking for the cream of the crop. I mean, the, the best fit for you guys. Yes. Right? First right of refusal. Well, there, that, there was no such thing. Well, that, that's somewhat where I was going because let's take big company X that you partner with, who's got bigger, a bigger wallet than you do, you know, bigger payroll. And they can say, I want Teddy Burris. And you go, man, I want Teddy Burris. And now you're back in the same game you were before you started Site Source. Yeah, but that was a a risk we were more than willing to take because the alternative would have would have meant that we're withholding something from these people in exchange for ah, for yeah. what we're giving them. And that was not the idea. So again, it was yeah. the initial need was us needing people, yes. But there was oh, there were other dimensions to it. One of which was Ali's desire to pay it forward. One of the which was 
since I was involved with the entrepreneurial community in the triad for a decade by then, um, or not, not quite, yeah. uh, I wanted to see, I, I was part of all this uh, upswell of, of, of enthusiasm and funding and programs for all these, all these startups mm -hmm. and great companies and great entre entrepreneurs to get them going. And one of my fears has always been that until they actually start going and then they have to move away from here because they yeah. because they need need talent and so so there were other dimensions to it and the last thing we wanted to do would have been to uh to to somehow tie their hands and say yeah first first right of refusal i mean we have we have no right to do that uh in my mind anyway okay. but even if but even if we did i think it would be a, a counterproductive way to 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 try to recruit like you, well, that, you, you try like, to yeah it'd be like the dating days right uh Valen, when i was dating a few years ago you know i got you know two different women who are interested in me and this lady's got the you know first right of refusal car but this lady every year has got the better <laughs> beer i yeah. get you yeah i'm glad you guys didn't follow that model <laughs> yeah i can see where that and and the candidate feels stuck in the middle because yeah. exactly. ultimately exactly yeah. It, it, yeah. i don't I, I, we wanted to as i said most of it was about fit not so much technology or technical know-how because that we can teach and so the last thing you would want is is have somebody work for you who feels that you that they were forced to or something i mean that's yeah. or, or that or that you that they're all that, that whatever alternative whatever they had going whatever else they had going for them was taken away by yeah. us i mean you, you we wouldn't want that. We, uh, no, we, I mean, we even, we even, one of our employees uh, that came out one of one of the first classes uh, entered, mm -hmm. uh, entered an accelerator with a, with a business idea and uh, there was software business and we were supporting, uh, supporting it through and through. And everybody thought that we we're crazy because we invested all this time and energy and money into training her. And then now we're, now we're giving her a, a, an off ramp and not only an off ramp, but we're actually paving it as, as we're going, as we're, it's going along. And, uh, but again, if, if, if uh, we're still a small company, so we can afford to make sure that people who work for site source want to work for site source and, and, and not try to come up with, with uh, you know schemes to uh, mm -hmm. prevent them from leaving or or, yep. or anything like that. So, so here, yep. here's a question. Uh, first of all, I need to let Dean know that uh, no, Dean, it wasn't a few years ago. And uh, by the way, <laughs> I, I kept both of them women happy. Um, but that's a whole other story for another day. Dale asked this question: What was the primary uh, um, tools or languages that your uh, that uh, Empower was teaching these guys? Well, it it changed over time, uh, as as you can imagine. That that's going back to one of uh, the points Randy made is that which mm -hmm. is and which is especially true in software development that you have to be a lifelong learner. It is going to that's the one constant is that there isn't any. Um, so and because we assumed no prior knowledge, um, we started with the basics. Um, you know, this is a computer. This is the internet. This is how they connect and. Uh, and then moved on to the very, very base, started with the basics, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, um, then some some uh, uh, JavaScript platforms yeah. uh, uh, broken out into three grant, three phases, front end, um, uh, databases, back end, and then the, the application layer. And in terms of languages in the application layer, I think it was very heavy on C sharp mm -hmm. um, because still there's especially with large companies most of the jobs out there are are in that arena and dot net um we one year we did a little bit of ruby a little bit of both years we did some elixir which is a, a our go-to functional programming language um i don't i don't know if, it, if, yeah. if it's the platform to get into the the the, the real specifics of it but that's um yeah. That's that's basically it. But it was it was also flexible. So if if uh, if one of our partners, one of the employers that came and came to us and said we want to hire a bunch of people out of your class, but we use this particular language or this particular pe platform, we would have happily uh, incorporated it. it. As that yeah. was not the case, we just went with most what, mostly what we used. We did sure. React for front end. Uh, we did everything on the in terms of in terms of databases. A lot of SQL, but uh, 
but but everything else and and throughout the course we were also using the actual tools that developers use so while there was no special day of class for um uh for cloud infrastructure everything they did had to be either taken down or put out and deployed on one of the three i think we touched on three different cloud platforms um they had to uh they had to use essentially, as I said, all the all the various tools that that professional software developers use uh, on a daily basis. Got it. Got it. Hey, let's uh, let's pivot for a moment here and take it to a a, a bigger bigger uh, stage here. Uh, this what I'll call grow your own. Uh, you're a smart guy, but you're not you know the only one with this idea. I'm sure. Uh, where did you get it? Uh, is this going on in other countries, other states, other industries? What's that landscape look like? Uh I don't know about I don't know about the global landscape for it, yeah. uh, and we didn't come up with the with the idea. I think we came up with an at the time. I don't know if it was singularly unique, but but unique as far as my knowledge and experience went. Mm-hmm. A mixture of uh, I mean, there were boot camps, there were for profit boot camps all all around, and uh, and in fact, for 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 a short period of time back in 2009 when we first started with we were playing with the idea of doing something like that uh, so training was all it was never too far away most of the for-profit uh boot camps operated completely differently and so we i think we were again i, I don't i wouldn't say unique because i can't say that but i didn't know of any other program like empower at the time uh where where it was free of charge, it was we were even we would even help you help place you and uh, and it was so intense. There were a lot of other programs where where it was stretched out over longer periods of time, but uh, yeah, no, I, I didn't know of any at the time. Uh, but since then, I have heard of of more and more some. I wouldn't say exactly like it, but but similar, more actually closer to the program okay. that brought Ali to Winston, where a company approaches a, 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 a firm that does technology training and says, hey, I'm going to sponsor an, enti- an entire class and everybody who finishes has a job with us. Hmm. And so that those are happening. Those are happening more and more. Um, it's still. That is, I think, still more common, although. I still don't think that it's as uh, I I think it's still a better empower is still a better approach in terms of success and, 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 uh, and just effectiveness for those, for those uh, organizations. I I can't imagine that a generic program like that, where uh, you contract somebody and then they'll just train a bunch of people and then give them to you. I don't know if, if, they would have anywhere near the rate of success that we had with the people that we ended up hiring out of these uh, out of these classes. Interesting. And then, of so course, and then, of course, in other industries and other other professions and other fields, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. I mean, this is not a this is not a new new model. It's uh, it's um, although I don't have firsthand experience with it, I would imagine that it's very similar to the way to the way trades were passed on for. For, for a long time you have maybe a, an introduct, introductory class in in shop or somewhere and then whoever is actually mm-hmm. interested and, and thinks that this is what they would want to pursue they they take it one step further and eventually a good bunch of them are going to end up as apprentices in in, in some shop and, yeah, yeah and well i mean goodwill does a lot of this too and and i'll take and, and of course you know tempe over there and tempe runs our skills training program and whether it's forklift operators or others, uh, they're large employers in the area that say we need people, and and you know we'll we'll scoop them up. They pass the course, we need them because yeah. now they'll be certified, and exactly. that's that's a big thing. Teddy, you had your hand up. Did you? Yeah, want I was to say I, I listened to a podcast called mm-hmm. uh, Masters of uh, uh, Masters of Scale. Uh, Reed Hoffman is the host of this. I'm, I'm addicted to this podcast. I listen to about thirty minutes of it every day. And there was a conversation, and I'm I'm going to fail miserably, and so I'm about to generalize with the answer of who, but it was either FedEx, American Express, Bank of America, one of the big one of the you know big Fortune 50 organizations. They have a a, um, a boot camp of nature for free. Mm-hmm. They push people through, and then they 
you know, they hire from that. So doing it in house, doing it in house is 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 I think by far the best way to do. But uh, I don't know if this was before the live show actually started that we had the conversation, or you had the conversation about your neighbor's kid playing video games, asking you what to do. Or that was or beforehand, but it, it works now. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, but that would be my my suggestion would be actually the Goodwill uh, mm-hmm. uh, program. Like just go and go in and, and, and take those um, those training mm-hmm. courses um, at Goodwill or at, at your local community college uh, yeah. and figure out if 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 it's if it's something that uh, that would interest you that you can you can see yourself do doing for the for the rest of your life or at least for a good chunk of your uh, of, of the I don't know the next decade or so uh, because <clears throat> software development is obviously been on the been on the front page for forever the 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 skills gap in terms of the in terms of software development but anywhere you look it's it's very similar or the same i Mm -hmm. uh, a buddy of mine runs a a a plumbing company and uh and he was joking that uh, we were having a conversation about empower and he was joking that he should do the same thing because uh, before long, you know, the guy that unclogs your toilet is going to be making way more than the guy that fixes your computer because there's just nowhere, they are just nowhere to be found. So, mm-hmm. um, and that's, and that's true in, in so many, in so many areas that, uh, that kind of lend themselves to a similar, similar approach. In fact, a lot of them can be, can be done even faster. So if you're, if you're a trades organization, you can probably put together a two-week program with that kind of intensity, where people are there from more as as if it were a full-time job, at least eight hours a day, five days a week. They're there for for two weeks. You you that's a two-week long two-way interview between them and you, and they will see if they want to work for your organization. You will see who 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 is it out of the 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 10, 15, 20 people that you would like to continue to train and then training doesn't stop there or doesn't yeah it, it doesn't end there it, it's it, those that you choose to hire now you're investing a lot more in them which is what we had done with all the people that we hired now you're looking at months and months and months of way more intense way more in-depth training but but that's you know mm-hmm. it's on the job so now. you know you, get, you got uh, for scythe tech here locally a uh, technical school is, is danielle does danielle rose still run that program do we know teddy uh the internship uh, the the apprentice program apprentice internship program. I, I i get confused in the two but uh so this is not just limited to hey i want to be a software developer i mean to your point about plumbers i think for site tech has a, a program for a uh, lineman to go up and work you know electrical yeah. lines there's, yeah there's a huge shortage coming in in, in that yeah, I we mean, also have a program where they partnered yeah. with somebody, someone doing uh, nursing. I believe that was mm-hmm. uh, several years back, and uh, and then you guys do all kinds of stuff. You guys do the uh, the truck drivers, the yeah, the yep. forklift training, all kinds of all kinds of skills and trades. But but it is that skills is skills training. So that's what it that's what it really. It's works. a big world, yeah. There are a lot of different skills, and your your you know sweet spot is the technical side of things. Uh, but yet, it, so if you're watching this or you're watching a rerun of the show and you've got the, <clears throat> the thing Ballant was talking about was, you know, hey, my next door neighbor's kid just uh, got out of high school. All he wants to do is play video games. Uh, do you have anything for him? It, you know, that kind of a thing. Or, uh, or hey, my kid just got out of college. He was a, you know, history major and, uh, you know, he doesn't want to be a school teacher. So what do we where do we go with that but he's inquisitive so boom maybe he goes and sees you so there there are opportunities out i guess it's one of the things i just wanted to convey is uh don't be paralyzed to indecision for fear of failing Hmm. or being wrong uh and i guess those are kind of intertwined uh we all make mistakes we try to do the best we can and and you may find too balan you've had guys that have, have entered the program with great intentions but you know what? It's better to it's better to to flush out take a shot for free, right? <laughs> and and flush out for free. And if nothing else, you close that door and say, maybe that ain't the career for me. And mm-hmm. you go somewhere else. But but Absolutely. but don't just sit there and do nothing. I guess that's my point. I'm trying to make here is you guys offer a great opportunity for people. Uh, you don't do it for them, but you provide them with the opportunity to really carve out a, a pretty cool career um yeah, absolutely I really do 
So um, we've got about 10 minutes left. Teddy, are there any other uh, Q&A or uh, chat things you uh, wanted to work Dean, in? Dean's asking a question about, you know, how do you choose the candidate uh, to hire? Um, yeah. And, you know, do you actually take them through an interview process afterwards as well? No, no, just to, just on the, uh, basically anybody who comes into the program uh, has has kind of the drive that uh, that we're looking for. And the next eight weeks is, is time for both sides to get to know one another. Yeah. Um, there's no, there's no real need for an interview after right. that. Yeah. So that's, that's the interview process for eight the, for the job. It, eight for weeks the job it's out together for 40 hours a week. You kind of going to get to know somebody pretty decently, you know? Exactly. So that's, <laughs> that's the, that's the, uh, the, the quote unquote job interview part of it, <laughs> or at least that's one aspect of the, of the interactions, but no, we only interview them. Uh, for because there, as you can imagine, especially in in twenty eighteen when it was fairly new, the the idea that uh, instead of charging them twelve thousand dollars, we we were going to um, to do this for free, was uh, that that definitely definitely captured a, a lot of people's uh, imagination. So we had we had we we spent maybe a hundred two hundred dollars on Facebook ads in uh, in Winston Salem and and uh, and. Yeah. Richard. And uh, next thing you know, we are, we already knew that we wanted to interview people, but we we received hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of applications. So we're like, oh my god, what we, we, what are we going to do? Because we if we don't figure something out, we're going to have to we're going to have to spend uh, months just doing nothing but interviewing people. So we actually threw in a second round of uh, just written interview questions. It was, I think, only. Um, three or four questions, uh, a very simple, short answer format. And, uh, and I couldn't believe it, but uh, several hundred of the applicants essentially self-selected them all out of the program by or themselves by just not bothering to answer, um, answer three uh, simple questions. In, in Imagine writing. that. <laughs> and Imagine so, uh, that. I know. And so, <laughs> so, uh, so next thing you know, we, but we, wow. we still, for the 40, for the 40 people, which ended up being, I think, forty-four who started the program. So mm -hmm. we, there were some some cuts that we just couldn't make, and uh, so we ended up uh, letting more people in them, which was true in the second one as well. Um, I think that for the forty-four positions or spots, we interviewed somewhere in the neighborhood of one hundred and twenty uh, candidates, and so wow. uh, and so and that was that ratio was probably about the same uh, in the in the second one, which. A lot of uh, so yeah that that that's probably not news news to you. The things that were new to us um, that were very surprising. Well, and mm -hmm. it, stop me if you want to go somewhere else. But this is this just popped into my head. Uh, a lot of the a lot of time we you hear a lot about um, the uh, the the diversity or lack thereof in uh, in software development. Mm -hmm. And so when we when we started the first program, everybody was predicting you know. 90% um, essentially young white guys that they were going to be our, that, that's, the, that's our pool. That's, that's who we need to look at. That's, that's what's going to happen. And uh, we, got. sorry. That's not what you got. Oh no, not at all. I mean, yeah. it's, it's, uh, we got, it was a perfect mirror of, of, uh, of the public at large it was it was 50 50 male female the age range was from 18 because that was our floor that was the minimum i think our mm -hmm. oldest candidate was in uh but the, there were there were two who were i believe in their very late 50s or early 60s in that in that class um racially completely diverse absolutely diverse backgrounds and uh and that held true the second time around as well so apparently you know once you once you remove all the barriers that you possibly can and and granted we haven't done that i mean there are still barriers that that uh that could be uh, removed but but you know a lot of people can't afford either the, the for-profit boot camp or the time commitment of a four-year degree or even a two-year degree but once once you start eliminating all those all those potential barriers what you find is that the desire to to have this as a career is 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 pretty um, evenly distributed. It's there's there's no magic uh, pocket of the population that is more inclined to uh, 
to to sit in front of a computer and code away uh then then yeah. yes. hey we've got six uh, minutes left i want to spend a couple three maybe a couple three minutes with you balan as far as wrapping up kind of giving us some some pointers and such teddy and i'll chat for a moment or two and then uh, we'll talk about next week's guest so uh, okay. any success stories that pop to mind uh, not necessarily even with site source but someone who has gone on to you know really really cool stuff uh anything is success stories you can you can you don't have to name names but just there are uh, there are know. several and uh, and it always warms my heart when i yeah. Uh, when when I hear uh, stories and 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 get those things, but uh, at the at the most basic level, it's it's just people who who found jobs. Who we did a very poor job of following up with the first class. So a year and a half later, when Winston starts um, uh, offered to to uh, mm -hmm. the dealer asked us to 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 partner uh, with us for the program and to kind of bring it in so that wins so that it can be part of Winston starts and, and, and available to all the, the, the cohort members. Um, they asked us the same question and we're like, yeah, sorry, we didn't, we didn't do a very good job of, mm. of keeping tabs on people. Um, although they still have access to us. So to this day, the uh, members of the first class have um, through Slack, the ability to ask us, um, you know, uh, for advice, technical, professional, whatever. And some of our instructors who obviously haven't gotten paid since 2018 and that they were contractors for that, for that one gig are still in those channels answering questions uh, free of charge to this day. Uh, but yeah, it, it, so they did a survey and it was, um, it, it was uh, over 50% had tech careers as a director and they named uh, Empower as, as the, uh, as, as the direct um very cool the hey, reason why they yeah. in that uh, take a minute or so if you would and just summarize what are a couple three takeaways you'd like folks to have again we've got about a minute or so for this okay well that's uh uh growing your own is 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 just mm -hmm. in our opinion the best way to go to uh to solve your your capacity issues your your hiring issues uh you finding talent competing for talent there's a bond uh, yes, you kind of put yourself out there. You make an investment, but that investment is, you know, is paid back um, many times over uh, by the by the quality of of the relationships and the the the, the alignment uh, in terms of personnel personal fit mm -hmm. with the positions with the organization. Um, not to mention the fact that you don't have to have them unlearn things. So that's that's another big that's another big factor. Um, it's, uh, we found it to be such an effective and, and such a good way of, of solving this problem that we're, we're in the first decade of our business, by far our biggest headache was always finding developers to do the jobs, not, it never even came close. I mean, finding jobs never even came close to being as big a headache as, as that I one was. today. For the past uh, for the past four or five years, three four years, um, we feel like we 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 are past that. We that is not our number one headache because we have a model that allows us to 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 increase capacity almost at will. Good. I mean, yes, it's it's not instantaneous. It does take an investment, and it and there's there's a lot more investment after the class that is that is going to continue for years. Uh, um, but the model works and uh, and it allows us to to not have to worry about that whereas everybody else yeah. is actually for them this worry is increasing as as yeah. the months and years yeah you've been proactive uh, proactive in approaching this and there's a benefit to both you and to not only your your students but also to other companies yeah. who yes. now have local ready made ready made talent so Valen Gaspar thanks for hanging in with us yeah, thank uh, you yep, thank you for CFO. having me yeah, CFO at Site Source and Grow Your Own has been our our topic today. So Teddy, I just real quick, uh, and I touched on this earlier. My little story is going to be to be that lifelong learner. Yeah, and and you mentioned Balan that you had folks from age eighteen up to guys <laughs> Teddy's in my age, and so that that tells me that there still is that spirit out there of of people who say, you know what, I want to make some changes. I proactively want to get after it. And so I, I love that attitude in my clients at, 
the professional center. And I'm sure you can appreciate that too. When you see that, that light bulb come on and say, man, this is awesome. So I'll leave it at that. Teddy, throw it to you to yeah. tell a story and take us home. Yeah. Ballot. Thanks a lot for joining yeah, us. I appreciate it. I, I love watching organizations uh, around the country who are subscribing to a model, maybe not as direct as yours, but to build the, the workforce that they need to hire in lots of different ways. So yeah. kudos to you guys for doing that. Uh, hey, next week, our special guest is Janae uh, Adams. Janae's going to come and talk about a conversation about how she became a, uh, a, a creative business as a speaker, as an author, uh, as a servant to the college community, helping uh, people understand yeah. um, how to overcome financial strife and challenges. So uh, next week, uh, join us at 1155 for Lunch Conversations with Randy and Teddy, sponsored in part by the Elder Law Firm out of Greensboro, North Carolina. Randy, good seeing you, buddy. Yeah, All but... of our audience, great to see everybody. Bailett, thanks for joining us. Y'all take guys. care. All right, see you now. Bye.